This is Colin Cattell with Palisade Radio. On the line with us today is our technical expert, returning guest, Jordan Roy Byrne from the Daily Gold. Jordan, thanks for being with us. Colin, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. January 16th, you came on the show and called the bottom for the junior mining stocks. The past couple weeks, the GDXJ began to move upward again, establishing a higher low than the December low. Monday is the last trading day of the month and also of the second quarter of the year. Taking an isolated view of the monthly and quarterly charts, things are looking very strong for precious metals and mining stocks. Is there any significance you give to this? Well, I do give significance because uh, looking at charts, you know, most people today, they look at daily or weekly charts, which is fine, but monthly charts are more important than weekly charts, which are then more important than daily charts. And then when you bring in quarterly charts, those are more important than monthly charts. And, and looking at uh, the close of the month and the close of this quarter, um, what, we're, what that tells you is, or I should say, at the end of a month and the end of a quarter, well, the end of the quarter is when most books close. And so when you're looking at statistics on mutual funds and things of that nature, it's done quarterly. Uh, some other statistics are done monthly. So, you know, what uh, technical analysts will always say, you know, pay attention to how a stock closes the week because that means uh, traders who hold it, they're willing to hold it over the weekend and into the beginning of the next week. And you can say the same thing for the month and the quarter. But if you're willing to hold something at the end of the month and then at the end of the quarter, I mean, that's a lot more significant, as I said, because books are closing uh, at those times. And essentially looking at um, both the quarterly and the monthly charts, uh, we did have a little weakness in the sector today, but we have one day left. And it, it, even if we have a decline on Monday, it shouldn't really damage the monthly and quarterly charts that much. So with, particularly with respect to the stocks, we're going to see quite a bit of strength in the monthly and quarterly charts. And for example, looking at GDXJ, I have a monthly chart on my screen. And we know that in the last couple of weeks or, or since the beginning of this month, there's really been a, a, a huge explosion in volume. We've seen all-time high volume as far as uh, you know, certain weeks and, and definitely for this month. And, and I'm sure we'll, we'll see it for the quarter also. We've just seen a very strong rise this month uh, and, and also this quarter. And Looking at the monthly chart of GDXJ, the, the rise this month, when you're looking at a candlestick chart, has completely engulfed the last two months. And, and uh, you know, as of yesterday, we were very, very close to actually closing above where we closed in February. Now, if GDXJ has a very good Monday, uh, then it would do that. And, it, and if it's able to close above uh, where February closed, it would be the highest monthly close in, in about 10 months, I think. So, I mean, this is significant, significant because if you look back to last year, and if you're looking at a, a monthly chart, uh, the, the, the gains that we had last summer and then to begin this year, they, on a monthly chart, they, they haven't really been that strong. If you're just looking at uh, you know, the, the candlestick for that month and how it compares to the previous months, Whereas what happened this month is coming into this month, it looked like we were going to decline further, maybe make a double bottom and test those lows. But what happened is we had a huge reversal in a very strong month where we completely engulfed the trading of last month and the month before, and, much, and we engulfed much of the decline. Actually, I should say most of the decline that we had, uh, I believe that was in March uh, or uh, yes, that was March, April. Yeah. So we're, we're in with this, with this month's activity, we're really engulfing the last several months. And we just didn't see that the last, uh, two, uh, bottoms that we had over the last year. So, uh, th that kind of strength. And, and as you said, it's the close of the quarter. Um, that, that tells you that, uh, traders and investors are now they're, willing to hold their positions uh, over a longer period of time. Again, we didn't see that after the last two bottoms. So I, I think what, what that's telling us is that uh, this rise is going to be more sustainable uh, you know, over the coming weeks and months. And as you said, I mean, look at the monthly charts. We now have a higher low. Uh, it, it's clear. Uh, and, and, and so I'm just bringing up a chart here uh, of gold and also silver. Uh, the metals are not quite 
as strong as the stocks. I know we'll touch on that later, but but even gold was able to uh, this month. It was able to engulf the trading activity of the last two months. Again, that's something that we did not see at the the bottom last June uh, and the bottom uh, last December. So. Uh, uh, just the strength that we're we're seeing in the monthly charts and also the quarterly charts it, it, it's it's significant and, and in my opinion I, I think it's further confirmation uh, that we've seen a bottom at least in the stocks and it does make a stronger case for the metals although the metals the stocks are really leading as we've discussed before um, so uh, I mean it, with the way we're closing this month in the quarter it, it, it looks very bullish to me. Okay, the metals are not quite as strong as the stocks. The stocks are leading the metals up. Are you any bit concerned that the metals can sustain the move that we've had in the stocks? Um, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, if there's any uh, negative right now for the stocks, it could be that the metals, and particularly gold, I mean, gold compared to its historical bear markets, uh, it, it's, it's bear market wasn't or isn't as extreme uh, compared to its history relative relative to silver and the mining stocks. So in other words, silver and the mining stocks, their bear markets are far more extreme relative to history. We haven't seen that with gold. And as you know, I was I was thinking, you know, earlier in the year, well, it is possible maybe gold will break below 1200. And uh, the, at that time, the, the stocks will double bottom or form a higher low. Um, I, I don't want to completely rule out that possibility, uh, but at the same time, it's very difficult to call because the stocks are leading. And, and remember, if you go back to, to late 2010, that's when the ratios of the stocks against the metals started to peak. So that was a full eight or nine months before gold peaked. And then when you got into early 2010, then you had silver peak and you had the majority of the stocks peak. Then five five or six months later, that's when gold peaked. So uh, the leadership from the stocks, that's, that, that's something that we should expect. It's happening, but it's, it's not necessarily an indication that the metals have bottomed. Although, I, I mean, I do believe silver has bottomed. And, and if I had to give you a, a point blank answer on gold, I mean, I would kind of have to lean to saying that it has bottomed. Just because the rest of the sector is leading it, the rest of the sector looks strong. Um, so, I mean, it, it, w w with re with respect to your question, getting back to that, um, that is something to pay attention to, to keep in the back of your mind. But we do have to remember that the stocks are leading, and so they're going to tell the tale going forward. If the stocks start to show a lot of strength, that's going to tell you that gold, sooner rather than later, is going to move up and break fourteen hundred. If the stocks kind of fizzle out here in the coming weeks, uh, then that would tell you that gold is probably not ready to break 1400 anytime soon. In your model portfolio, you went from holding shorts a few weeks ago on the GDXJ to being over 80% long at this point in the mining sector. What gives you such confidence to take that move? Well, uh, getting back to my first answer, uh, and mentioning the volume, I mean, we just saw record volume moves. I mean, looking at the charts, uh, we were hedged pretty strongly. And it, the, the move earlier this month really caught me by surprise. It came on huge volume. Uh, it was very strong. There was just not, no negative thing you could nitpick out of it. And as I said, we're, we, we look like we're going to close the month and the quarter very strong. That's another good sign. And also, Colin, I mean, as we've talked about before, looking at silver – in looking at the silver bear analogs chart, this, the bear market in silver was essentially the second worst of all time. I mean, and, and, and I was saying to my subscribers, you know, I'm looking for a final break here and then we're going to have a big rebound. But we started to break a little bit and we should have kept going lower, but it didn't happen. So the, the risk reward as far as silver and the silver stocks was just super favorable. At that time, we had... Uh, a record nominal growth short position in silver. So, I mean, that's future demand, future buying that was building up. And in addition to that, the silver stocks, while silver was testing its bottom, the silver stocks were not even close to their bottoms. So that was basically telling you uh, that, I mean, that was another strong signal 
that silver was about to bottom and rebound. So those were reasons why we started jumping into the silver stocks. And also, the, the as we've talked about before, looking at the bear analogs chart on the gold stocks, I mean, there was just very, very little chance that they were going to keep going lower or, or a lot lower, I should say. Now, we were hedged just because the price action wasn't so good. And, and I expected, you know, maybe we could double bottom. Uh, it was very weak. But as I said, it, it things really started to turn around. Uh, we were closing at very strong levels. We were having record volume. So those were the reasons that we had to get back into the where I should say, you know, we had to cut the hedges and start buying aggressively. And you know the stocks that we were buying. Um, you know, I, I believe they have the strongest fundamentals, and that the downside risk in the stock, the, the stocks we were buying, was very, very low. Uh, you know, even lower than say GDX or GDXJ. So uh, that's that's the reason uh, we turned aggressively bullish. Jordan, pull out your crystal ball for a moment. Considering we've been in a bear market and bottoming process for over three years, and the fundamentals in place for precious metals. How long do you think that the bull market that's starting out now will last for investors? Well, I know this is something we've talked about before. I, I would probably say um, if, uh, things in, in the economy and, and market trends, they tend to move for quite a while. So um, I, I would say at this point, at least four years. Um, I mean, I, I, I would be surprised if this bull market lasted beyond 2020. So, I mean, I'm kind of looking at 2018, maybe even 2019 as when it could end. But that's just with respect to the precious metals and the stocks, as you know, I cover, um, you know, commodities in general. Uh, they, they might uh, they might peak a year after that. But but that's just a guess. So, I mean, that I, I think we have uh, many years to run and you know, cu coming out of the bottom with respect to GDXJ. Let's look at well, you could say the same thing for all these stocks. Colin, remember a year ago when we started bottoming, ever the whole sector and all the mining stocks were extremely oversold. And even since that point, we had a, a sharp downturn at the end of last summer to December, and, and then from March to the end of May, we had another sharp correction. So even in the bottoming process, we still had two more sharp corrections. So at some point, we're just going to continue to move higher. We're going to break out of these bottoming formations, and and I, I think that. That is the the risk is to the upside over the next year or so that, um, you know, looking at the stocks, once we break out of these bottoming formations and these stock indexes make a, a 12 or 13 month high, uh, I mean, that's going to bode very well and for continued gains. So um, I, I, I just wouldn't worry about the short term pullbacks. You know, you, you, you have to know that they're going to come. And when you see 10, 12 percent dips and things that that's when you have to take advantage. Well, four years is a long time to make money for investors. Jordan, thanks so much for your insights. Uh, for all of our listeners, Jordan Roy Byrne, thedailygold.com. Hope to get you back soon. Thanks, Colin. <laughs>